Hey guys, this is Drax, back with another how-to guide, and this time we'll be looking at the chrome-plated villain, Captain Phasma. So Phasma is the latest villain to be added to the game, added at the same time as Finn in the Last Jedi season. A bit of backstory on Phasma, she was recruited by a First Order officer called Brando Hux on the planet Parnassos. His son, Armitage Hux, is the one we see in the latest films. Phasma later became captain in the First Order and oversaw the training of the Stormtroopers. This is where her link is to Finn, as she was in charge of training him back when he was only known by FN2187. At 2 meters tall, played and voiced by Gwendolyn Christie in the films, Phasma with her completely chrome armor has a dominating presence. In Battlefront 2, her abilities are Staff Strikes, Survivor and First Order Sentry Droid. Her weapon of choice is the chromium polished F11D Blaster Rifle. So let's get into the first ability, Staff Strikes. Here Phasma unfolds her staff and delivers devastating strikes against anyone foolish to get close enough. It can hit a combo of three times with the third being the most powerful strike. Like other refresh abilities, this one recharges all the time so you can consistently hit people with the staff if you wanted to. But to get the free hit combo you need to have three strikes in reserve and you're not allowed to be interrupted during the hits. To tell the truth, this is probably her weakest ability. The staff is a bit slow to swing and doesn't really work unless you completely surprise your opponent or hit them when they are stunned. So this one is mainly for use with the First Order Sentry Droid, so we'll take a look at that ability now. Here Phasma deploys a droid that will consistently blast shots at any targets nearby. When any enemies get too close, it will automatically shock them, leaving them stunned on the spot for a short period of time. This makes it easy to land a load of shots in their head or get those staff strikes Bye, in. Like all the other villains and heroes, Phasma has some milestones that you'll probably want to complete. One being hit 30 enemies with a final blow from staff strikes. Using the sentry droid is the main way to do this one. In fact, the sentry droid is Phasma's main tool to stay alive while she is defending. She's more of a defensive character overall, and especially in heroes vs villains capable of holding down an area. Anyone enters the sentry droid shock radius, they are easy kills even with the staff strikes. The only thing I will say is that the default shock duration is pretty short, so when you see an enemy about to enter the shock area, get ready to strike quickly. If you can land the first strike, this will knock them down, and the other two strikes should be easy to get in after. The sentry droid is actually really strong and when used properly is a big aid to your team. Holding down a capture area is far easier with this droid around. What I will say is that I would like to be able to pick up the droid and move it instead of blowing it up every time. You can do this with normal turrets, so hopefully DICE will add that in at some point, as I think that would be a good change for Phasma. So that's one small kind of buff they could give Phasma, and then concerning the staff strikes, the strikes just need to be a little bit faster in their animation. Too quick, and I can actually imagine this one being a bit overpowered as it knocks people down, so just a little bit faster and the ability will definitely increase in usefulness. And then the final ability is Survivor. No doubt this is Phasma's best ability. This one increases Phasma's health pool temporarily, so use this before going into combat or when there is a high chance of taking damage. This is pretty much all the time in Battlefront and since the cooldown is pretty short, you can use this ability a lot. Since she doesn't have a star card that regens any health, this is her main way of staying alive. When this is active, enemies will have to eat through the extra health pool before potentially doing any permanent damage to her normal health. Great for staying alive and keeping the streaks going. Her weapon, the Sonblast F11D Rifle, is one of the more interesting ones in Battlefront 2. A lot of people say it's weak, and at first I also felt it was quite weak, but in truth, it has a lot going on. Up close, it feels like a CR2 at first, with similar bloom but less damage. The key with this one is to hold down the trigger. After a couple of seconds, the boat will form into a straight line as they travel towards your target. This means Phasma is then capable of pinpoint accuracy at extreme ranges. This is why she has the powerful scope with two levels of magnification. She can pretty much hit anyone at any distance and the drop off damage doesn't seem to be too bad at all. On Crate, one of the maps that came in with the last Jedi season, Phasma is perfect for picking off enemies at great range. It's kind of funny because we are normally taught to burst or tap fire to get more accuracy but with this weapon it's all about holding down the trigger. With her base level thermal scope, she can pick out targets via the heat, and then she has an additional level of zoom by clicking the melee button, which allows her to take out targets at further distances. The more I use this weapon, the more I like it. It's very accurate once you hold down the trigger, and headshots are easy to hit consistently, so it drops enemies pretty quick. 
I originally wanted to have more damage added on this weapon, but to be honest, I'm not sure it's actually needed because of how accurate the weapon is. It would be interesting to see what changes to make to Phasma in the near future. But anyway, let's look at some ways to make Phasma even better. Yes, I am of course talking about her star cards. She has some great cards that boost both survivability and damage output. We'll start with the Galactic Assault Loadout. Here my first card is Safety First. This gives Phasma 60 extra health at top tier when using Survivor. In this case, every little helps and makes her a little bit tougher to take down. The second card is not hard enough and this one is a must. Now on top of the extra health we got with the first card, Phasma will also gain a 50% reduction to damage if she is damaged while this one is active. The damage reduction will then last for the duration of the ability. A 50% reduction in damage is massive and really makes Phasma one of the best tanks in game when the Survivor ability is active. This means you'll be able to play more aggressively and get more kills. I really like this card as Phasma's armor is actually meant to deflect blaster shots so at least with this one we get a better representation of the chrome armor. Then my third card is Easy Shots. Here for every enemy Phasma defeats with the F11D, she will reduce the weapon's heat by a maximum of 60%. That once again is a huge percentage meaning Phasma can easily deal with multiple enemies one after another without needing to manually cool her weapon. That's why I choose this one for Galactic Assault. The F11D is more than capable of putting infantry down. Taking on a group of enemies can be a bit harder, but combining the star cards we just looked at will turn Phasma into an absolute machine. We are talking a big difference between Phasma with and without these cards. More health, more resistance to damage, and more damage output. From a villain that seemed a bit weak in the first place, she is certainly not weak with these cards equipped. The only thing I changed for a Heroes vs Villains is the Easy Shot card. Because there are no easy targets to take down in HVV, you're better off with something else. I personally like There's No Escape, as this increases the shock duration on the sentry droid after it has already shocked two enemies. Isn't much more time, but it's a bit more, which allows you to get that first strike in and combo the other two. You can also switch out the safety first card and go with Finish Them Off. I say this because yes, 60 extra health is great, but won't make such a big difference in HVV. The Finish Them Off card ups the damage on the last staff strike by 50 at top tier. Now that last strike already does a lot of damage, so to up it with more I think is definitely worth doing. Even though the strikes are a bit slow, when combined with the sentry droid they aren't too hard to land. And then of course when you do land them, Phasma absolutely decimates her enemy, either killing them straight out or leaving them on very little health. So that's the card loadouts, and using these combinations should definitely improve your effectiveness with Phasma. But remember these are just my recommendations, you might have something different that works well for you and that's fine but as this is a guide I'm just trying to give some advice to anyone who might be struggling to find something that does work. So now here are a few extra tips to help you out a bit more. And let's start with the sentry droid. Since this is so important to Phasma you want to put it somewhere it won't die easy. In HVV I just put it in any main battle area, anywhere I think it will shock the most heroes. But in Galactica so it's better used as a defensive tool. Around corners or off to the side will catch enemies out as they run into the room. Maybe this will be if they get in its shock radius, but also don't forget about its blaster fire capable of damaging enemies consistently. This droid serves as a triple function, stun, detect and damage. Place in an area where it can do all three to really get the best out of it. The next tip is a general one for blaster users against Jedi. Use that row. You have two rows to dodge with before it goes into a short cooldown. Against lightsaber users, this is essential for minimising damage. Phasma, like Finn, is quite big so doesn't seem to dodge quite as well as, say, the more nimbler heroes, but can still pull it off with good timing. Rolling whilst facing your opponent will give you more of a chance to fire back at your enemy and eventually take them down. Next is using Survivor at the right times. This is an incredibly strong ability when combined with that not hard enough star card. Any combat situation, get this one activated. If it's on cooldown, then just wait before engaging. It's quite a short cooldown and it's definitely worth the wait to gain the extra health and the damage reduction. And finally, with Staff Strikes, use this one only when you have the advantage. That might be when you have got behind enemies or more likely when the sentry droid has shocked them. The animation is slow and if time wrong will lead to you taking a lot of damage, so knowing where and when to use this is important. If you do see an opportunity to use it on some infantry, make sure Survivor is activated. This way, if it does go wrong, maybe they row and start shooting at you, you at least mitigate some of the damage. And remember, Phasma also has a basic melee ability available, which is much faster to use, so maybe the better option in a few situations. But anyway, that is the tips and the guide right there. In conclusion, Phasma is actually a pretty good villain in Battlefront 2. 
Her staff strikes are slow but pack quite a punch, knocking over heroes and dealing massive damage. Her survivor ability turns her into a tank capable of facing groups of enemies, and her sentry droid is a fantastic tool for its detection, damage and shock function. If you can master abilities and combine them with the right star cards, then I'm sure you'll dominate the battlefront with Captain Phasma. So hopefully you have enjoyed this one and found it helpful in some way. Next up is Rey, my personal favourite lightsaber hero, so if you have been having trouble with Rey, then I'll have some tips coming your way. I have a load of other Battlefront 2 guys on my channel now, so if you are struggling with something, check out my other videos as I might have something there to help you out. If you did enjoy this one, then I always appreciate a thumbs up, and if you would like to see more, then you can of course join the channel. Make sure to leave your thoughts below, and maybe any videos or guides you would like to see in the future. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.